Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 7. Now, you may be asking yourself, am I watching a PowerPoint presentation on a Sunday? And yeah, the answer is you are the ultimate fantasy console. Today we're going to be talking about general size coding techniques when it comes to the character limits. So these techniques may or may not apply in other contexts, such as compression, which we'll be talking about in a few days. But first, I want to talk about some help and resources that are available to you on your size coding journey. The first of all is sizecoding.org. It is a wiki and a lot of the tips and tricks that you're going to see today are already there. And it has the added benefit that if you discover something new, you can add it. The Love Byte Discord is available and there is a Tiny Code Christmas channel, which you can ask all your questions on. We also are on IRCnet and the Love Byte channel, and that is bridged to Discord as well. And again, you can find us on Mastodon and Twitter, and links for all of those are in the description. So you've been working on your size coding for a full week now, and we want to talk about maybe taking a look at some other size coded productions, specifically those with character limits. So the first thing is to get some inspiration, check out the Field Effects Monday Night Stream. And there is one tomorrow if you're watching this on the day it was released. And that has bite jams and bite battles using Tick 80. And the bite jams have no character limit, but it's the same techniques. And then the bite battles are limited to 256 characters and 25 minutes. If you're interested, check it out. Livecode.demozoo.org is an archive of all the live code for Tick 80 and shaders as well. But the ones we're interested in specifically are Byte Gems and Byte Battles. So you can go on there and take a look and you can click download, get the code and pop it into Tick80 and take a look at the effect. Nanogems.demozoo.org is another great resource and it is a curated gallery of the best size coded productions across all platforms. Both these sites are under the larger Demozoo.org umbrella and you should definitely check that site out as well. Now I just want to highlight some demo scene videos that you can watch to get a better idea of the demo scene and PS, PS Enough has monthly demo scene reports that are really worth checking out and it also has a what you need to know coming back to the demo scene in 2022 video that also serves as a very good introduction to all facets of the modern demo scene. Crypt gave a talk at EMF camp and it's an introduction to the demo scene. It's about 20 minutes, has some demos, has a bit of history and it's worth checking out. Inverse Phase gave a talk at Hope 2022 and that is a three hour long talk about the demo scene and it combines a demo show, talks about bite battles, shader showdowns and if you really want to dig in, it's worth the watch. And if you want to get ahead of yourself, there are some Love Bite seminars on the Tick 80 and the Pico 8, but Spoiler alert, you may see something that you're going to learn in a later day on Tiny Code Christmas. So now we're going to move on to size coding techniques specifically to deal with character limits. The first technique we're going to talk about is reducing variables. You can reduce intermediate variable usage when finished your effect. So get your effect working and then after the fact you can remove some intermediate variables. When we were working on our plasma effect, you'll have seen that we had an intermediate variable C for color we can save a few characters by getting rid of that and removing the variable C and placing the sign calculations directly into the PIX function. The next technique is the exact opposite of that, and it is to increase your intermediate variable usage when an expression appears multiple times. So, for example, here I have some part of a, maybe a sign scroller or something like that, and I'm printing out, hello world, the X values are different, the y values are similar, they're not completely the same, but the sine x divided by 10 plus t is. So what I can do to save a few characters is bring that out into its own variable, and then I can use that common part with the, then multiply it by 20 and multiply it by 40. This one is more pertinent to tick 80, and due to the long math dot sign names, you can save characters by assigning a long function name to a shorter variable across multiple uses. So if you're going to be using math.sign absolutely everywhere in your program, alias it and it'll save your characters. You can also alias just the math part and to m maybe and you can do m.cos, m.sign and again depends on your, per your particular situation as to which one of these is better for you. 
When we're working with square roots, raising a number to the power of a half is the equivalent. So mat.square root can be replaced with to the power of 0.5. We can even omit the leading zero. And this can save us six to eight characters in tick 80. And it can save us one to three characters in pico 8. And that's because with the square root function, you have to include the brackets. But with the um, power of, you don't. Obviously, that will depend on your expression. So you may still need brackets, but it's not mandatory for the power. You can often just leave off the square root and just scale the value without too much of a problem. And again, this is when we're going by looks and not mathematical accuracy. You can replace your for y equal to zero, for x equal to zero with a single loop. And in this case, for the tick 80, that would be for i equal zero to 32,639, which is the number of pixels on the screen. And obviously we're subtracting one from that. That's 240 by 136 because it starts at zero. And then to get the X value, we take I and we mod it by 240. And then to get the Y value, we divide it by 240. We can save two more characters on that for loop by using exponent notation. So instead of writing 32,639, we can write 4E4. So 4E4 translates to four by 10 to the power of four, which again equals 40,000. Your loop will be doing more iterations, but there'll be a, that's the trade-off between size and performance. If you're using the PIX function, it will clip, so you don't have to worry. But if you're using POKE, which will be covered in a day or two, it can trash the memory. So now, white space. Your entire TIC80 or PIX program can be reduced to a one-liner, with new lines either being eliminated or replaced with spaces. So this is an example from tick 80. We have our function, tick, print, high, end, all on one line. There are some issues, however. There's a problem with the parser interpreting hexadecimal notation. And generally, you will avoid single letter variables, A through F, in upper and lower case, because they can be interpreted as hexadecimal. And again, hexadecimal uses 0 to 9, A to F. And you should also avoid using X because if that follows specifically a zero, that can be interpreted as hexadecimal notation. So we can see an example here. We have a bunch of assignments, g h i j equal to zero, 10, 240, 136. And if we write it out here, we can just remove the new line. We have saved, we saved three spaces there just by bumping it up to the one line. However, if we introduce something with a variable, let's say named a and make it equal to zero, and we include that using the same technique, we will get an error. So if you see that malformed number near 136a, it's trying to interpret 136a as some kind of a hexadecimal number. Keywords in tick 80 need to be followed by a space, and do needs one before it, as the d could be part of a hexadecimal number. If you're using if statements, you don't need one before the then. So for this example, i equals zero to 239 do, you can't do either of the following. You can't eliminate that space, nor can you eliminate that space. So now we're going to move on to some size coding techniques that are specific to the tick 80. If you're using sine and cos, you can approximate the cosine using either of the following. Now, this isn't too useful on Pico 8 because Pico 8 uses turns instead of radians, so the saving isn't doesn't really justify the technique, and we don't have the aliasing problem on uh, that we do in tick 80 with the mat dot cos mat dot sine. So what's happening here is sine and cosine are 90 degrees out of phase. So cosine will give us the same value as a sine value that's 90 degrees um, different. So the first option here is to subtract 11 radians and 11 radians is 630 degrees and if you subtract that from two full revolutions, it gives you 90 degrees. So when you subtract that, it's the equivalent of 90 degree difference. Same with the eight radians, but it's a little less accurate, but it saves one character. Tick equals load. So this is a function that's built into the tick 80. And basically in Lua, you can omit any parentheses around a function call if the only parameter is a single literal string. So this allows us to eliminate the brackets and it allows us to place all of our code on one line.
it's mandatory that we place all our code on one line. And again, once you do this, your program isn't that editable. If you do this, you may need to escape some special characters. Maybe if you have a slash n or something inside of your, if you have a control code inside of your text or something, you may need to put a extra backslash in front of it. Substring. So this is the technique that we use to pull out the individual characters from a string when we were working on our scroller. So I've created a variable here called text and I've assigned it value hello. I have then to extract it, I can use the string module and I can use the sub function, pass it the variable name and the start and end location, and it will retrieve for me that one character. And I can also reduce that further by using sub directly on the text that I want to. And I can reduce that even further by eliminating the variable, putting parentheses around my literal string and calling the sub function to give me back that one letter. And here's an example of popping it into a print function. That print is obviously going to be inside of a for loop, and you can use that to extract the letter from your text. So now we're going to move on to some size coding techniques that are specific to the Pico 8. Dijkstra may have considered them harmful, but here they can cut down on your characters, so they're fine with us. So you can replace your draw function with a label and a go to. So a label you need to prefix it with two colons and postfix it, and you can use a single character label, and in tweet carts you'll often see maybe a heart emoji or something like that. Your code in code goes here is where you would normally put your code in your draw function. There is a flip function which uses to synchronize the frame buffer being copied to the screen, and then you call go to, which takes you back to your label. Pico 8 copies the frame buffer to the screen 30 times a second, and if your effect is something that isn't dependent on having a complete frame, you can emit flip. So you have your label, your code, and your go-to without calling flip. Under normal circumstances, uh, similar to the draw function, uh, flip will essentially wait until the buffer is ready to synchronize. So if you don't worry too much about the state of your effect, you can emit flip. If you're using a custom palette, 2D Array has a palette maker, which can output your palette. You can pick the colors uh, visually, but it will also output the palette in tweet jam mode, which uses P8 ski or Pico 8 ski or P uh, whatever it's called. And it will use control codes and some other magic to reduce the character count. There's a link to that in the description. Pico 8 ski, P8 ski is the character set for the Pico 8, and there is a lot of control codes and other magic in there that you can use to shorten your code. These three examples are taken from a tweet by Zep, and you can see that they demonstrate some shorter versions of some useful Pico 8 constructs. It's really worth digging into the documentation on these to get the full benefit of them. That's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed your first week of Tiny Code Christmas. We have only five days left to go, and I hope to see you at the finish line.